I think I'm the only one uh, who has uh, something to demo for today, so I'll start. Please excuse uh, that I'm not uh, on, uh, do not have my video uh, turned on because I'm I'm not sure about the speed. So actually, I'm a co in a coffee house. So I try to share my screen. If it does not work, please interrupt me and say, okay, it doesn't work. So we, we can abort this demo. Uh, so I assume you can see my screen. Yep. We can so, see. okay. Uh, I wanted to demo um, an issue I was working on um, last week, this week. So in this that case, um, I was trying. We were trying to improve um, how the incident issues are being uh, shown to the user, especially um, which information we can show uh, the user um, from when uh, fire alert. So before um, this match request, we just showed the the bare minimum. Um, so we try to extract um, the title and, and the description. For example, as mentioned in the issue, let me check in this issue. Um, for GitLab managed um, uh, Prometheus installation, we show very much information as you can see in this image. So we just show the, the title. So um, I went ahead and um, tried to to improve improve the, the title and the description a little bit. Um, so we have two use cases. Uh, first one is uh, self-hosted Prometheus installation, where users have um, have their um, uh, Prometheus um, installed manually, not via GitLab. So I tried to demo this one. For this, I um, uh, let me check. I created um, a small um, repository which um, sets up a, a local installation of, of Prometheus. Um, here, I find two alerts. As you can see, the most minimal below is the most minimal alert you can have. So it just contains the name, the expression, and that it. I'm not sure if you need four, I think, but uh, in order to test it locally, I I set it very low so I can see issues being created very freaking frequently. So I can actually change the code and see what's happening very, very, very fast. And the, the other rule is like, is an, actually an example of a uh, rule we have at GitLab itself. So uh, let me open this one. So that's actually a real alert. This alert is a little recursive because it, it's, it's a checking alert manager itself, which is a little bit weird, but okay. Um, so this two uh, alerts I have configured and uh, now I am starting uh, the Prometheus uh, server and the alert manager, which should connect to our to my low ins, uh, GitLab installation. So in order to do this, I have to set up the right IP and, and token and so on. So after that, I should be able to see uh, issues being created. So as you can see, we started with 52 issues because I obviously I did some testing before that. And now we have 54 issues. Uh, that, that means that just now, it created two, two more incident issues coming from this firing alerts. Um, calling the, the minimal one, you see that the initial um, information is a little bit improved. So just to remind you, um, the very minimal alert looks like this. So we cannot expect more information for that uh, alert but we try to extract as much as possible. So we are able to extract the start time and the full query and the name, of course. So that's for the minimal alert. For the little bit more descriptive alert, we've seen uh, earlier uh, this one. 
we have a little bit more information. So we can properly extract the title um, from the annotations. We can extract some description and uh, run book and so on. And again, the full query. So at, at the very least, we have some some information for a minimal alert and uh, for min minimal description alert um, and a little more, more information if the user um, creates like more annotations uh, for, for his alert. So that's for the self-hosted Prometheus installation. Uh, with Git, Git you can uh, of course do um, installation using Kubernetes and I've set one set up a project for this. So here I, um, let me check, I created a project, did a deploy, installed Prometheus, GitLab runner and so on. So um, let's wait for the data. And for this I created um, using our UI. So this when this alert fires, fires, which it is firing actually right now because I, I told uh, it so, it creates the following issues. So I am not very satisfied with this, but it's still better than the initial uh, attempt. We still show the title we had before, but um, before we just showed the title and an empty summary, which is not very um, nice, I guess. Right now, we added start at end, we again extract the full. Tree. So, while testing this demo, I realized that I actually I missed one suggestion just Josh made um, the, this one. So he suggest, suggested that the title could be a little bit, bit more descriptive like this. So we could add um, not only the title, but also the, the um, operator and the, yeah, the threshold. So um, right now my local, so I did this, it was quite easy. So you'll see, uh, where was I, okay, sorry just loading the list. So you've seen that like 20 minutes ago, I've changed, made this change locally. And right now we are showing uh, not only the title of the uh, alert, but also the threshold and the duration. So it's, it is matching kind of the title we have when we are sending the alert use, uh, via email to the user. So uh, I'm not sure if it's visible, but it's, it's basically replicating the the um, subject line of an alert uh, email. So, yeah, that's that's for me. That's it. Do you have any questions? Really cool. Thanks, Peter. Um, I I might have missed this, but can you go back to the rationale for why the the Description payload would be different between uh, a Prometheus cluster we installed versus one that was manually attached. Yeah, very, very good point. So, um, um, as I mentioned, this alerts um, are defined, are user defined. So, uh, this one is for self hosted uh, Prometheus. So, users can actually add labels and annotation or whatsoever. Um, with GitLab, you, we just Actually, I can show this. Um, when GitLab, so sorry for this, if going going back to this, yeah. So if we configure an alert using the GitLab UI, we push the configuration to the Kubernetes cluster and so on, and Prometheus picks it up. And the configuration looks like this. This is for the alert manager, which is not very excited, exciting. And this one is for the Prometheus, for the alerts itself. So here you can see an alert definition, which GitLab created and push it to, to Prometheus and the Kubernetes cluster. So you can see we also have like a title an expression and just the GitLab alert ID. This maps uh. 
to an alert ID in our database. And so we have, we have to take care of two use cases for self-hosted and GitLab managed. For GitLab managed installation, we pull the data from the database. And in the database, we currently only have like the title and no more information, no labels, no, no whatsoever. And we are not giving the user the possibility to define the labels using our UI yet. I'm not sure if that's a plan, but uh, where we may someday uh, would add this uh, to the UI. But right now, um, that's right about this. I, we can show for GitLab manage alerts. Does yeah. it make sense? Okay. No, it completely makes sense. It's, uh, uh, generally in our product, we can provide a more descriptive and informative experience when it's stuff that is kind of under our purview. But this is one of those strange examples where uh, you're actually able to add more descriptive information when you're self-managing it. And we should catch up to that, right? Like we should have that ability within when you're um, configuring alerts in ours, but we're just not there yet. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this is great. Otherwise, like I, Amelia was saying the same thing. It's super cool to see this work. For me, it's really like completing this workflow of, hey, you set up alerts, and then now those are coming in as uh, issues or incidents that you can then go action and create related merge requests to go fix or solve, so super cool. I have a quick question as well. Maybe I'm just missing it in the docs. I just have never really been able to find where we have it documented, so I'm gonna ask it now, and if someone needs to point me somewhere else, please feel free. How do we know or how do we set up who gets those alert emails? Like you showed the emails that you're getting from those alerts, but I don't know, it's not clear to me how we define that right now. Like how did you set it up so that you got an alert basically? Like, cause when I test it locally, right, I'll set up alerts on the project that I have, but I don't get alert emails if it exceeds that threshold. So I, so did you set it up locally or like on stage or production? Because locally. I remember Just we don't get locally. emails at all. Lo oh, right, right, right. right. Yeah, locally, I don't have email, of course. Okay. Yeah. Where yes, we yes. So, I, I, I can I can share my screen and show you how to access the the emails uh, being sent locally. So you can go to your local installation, and in document mode you have something like Rails opener. It's called, and there you can see all emails being um, delivered or sent by the local GitLab instance. So every time. Um, so it's not act actually sending emails using SMTP and so on in, in, into your mailbox. It's just um, um, storing this emails in without sending them. So you can you can see them here. It's like what it would be Doesn't sending if I did configure SMTP yeah, on. Right. The, yeah. Okay. Exactly. That and to Adriel's point, though. Um, it's sending it to admin at example.com. Where is that configured in GitLab? Right, that was very part two, good. yeah. Okay, this is part two, very good question. Let's look because I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think, I suppose it's all maintainers maybe or developers, um, maintainers, yeah, maintainers of the project, but let's check. Um, oh, you're right. That is in the documentation. I just read that. Any alert that is firing for more than five minutes automatically gets sent to all owners and admins, I believe. Um, yeah. Right. So, so, that's just a, that's, so that's just hard coded then. We don't really allow user configuration of those rules. That's just a... Right. It seems so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let me check. Um, Alert fired email. So actually, recipients are all group members without invites. <laughs> okay, all uh, owners and masters, as you said. Yeah, it's it's there. It's yeah. Yeah, and I guess you know the. I guess the plan is that we would use the send me an email on alert less now that we create instance and then enable the ability to like assign 
users to those incidents in some automated way. And those users will get an email to our standard notification automation. Yeah, makes sense. So we could change this uh, setting to, to allow users to, to add themselves to get this email. Because right now the setting just tells the project not to send emails. Yeah. Right. Which I think, again, I'm, I'm suggesting there might be a future where we deprecate the email, to, the option to do email. We don't need robustness in who and when you send emails if instead the preferred workflow is create an issue and then you can choose how you notify people on that issue. Which maybe, do we have slash commands for emails when you create an issue? I don't know that we do. Well, you would expect that somebody has their user account configured to receive oh, right, right, notifications. Right. Of we already have that. Yeah, you're right. Cool, that's great. Okay, any other, other questions? Otherwise, yeah, I, I am done at least. <laughs> I'm finished, not done. Uh, I don't have any. I don't think we had anything else on the agenda. Okay. Cool. Then have a Thanks nice everyone. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye. Bye, everyone.